going to do what we say, case a card. I'm going to take it right from the catalog. Now, I'm not telling you where it is in the catalog. I want you to find it, okay? Kind of like a little scavenger hunt. Find the card that looks like the one I'm making, and then you can post it in the comments, and we'll see who figures it out, okay? So, a little, a little game here. What you would need, now I'm doing different stamps, different um, die cuts, and so on. But what you need is a card base. I'm going to flip the camera down and we'll get started. Okay. I'm going to move things over a little bit so I can see comments and my camera. All right. Here we go. You need a card base. I'm using the new Lemon Lolly. Something about this color. It's, it's a soft yellow. Something about it, though is just very, very appealing to me. I'm not really sure what it is, but I just love it. It's soft, it's mellow, mellow yellow, um, and it's, I don't know, kind of like lemon yogurt, you know, a creamy, but it's not dull. It, it's, it has a brightness to it at the same time, a chiffon, um, whatever. So Lemon Lolly is um, new to the regular line of colors. Then we need, so that's your regular card face size. That's eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then you need a layer that is five and a, um, five inches by three and three quarters. So this is leaving a little bit bigger border around the card than we sometimes do. Sometimes we go um, a little bit further over, leaving just the eighth of a border all around. So this is a quarter inch all the way around. So we're cutting it down that half inch, okay, the overall half inch. And the folder I'm using right now is this cane weave, which is really lovely. Unfortunately, when you're looking at it here, or may, perhaps in the catalog, I don't think it shows up quite as nicely as it does in person. So that's one of the reasons why I wanted to show you this. Really nice, it does look like you know, the weaving on it on a chair, you know, the cane weaving on a on an outdoor chair. You could use either side. Obviously, this side looks like the actual straps of the cane that, that's woven. But um, check out and see what side you like. On the other side, it is something a little more subtle. It doesn't look like caning, but it certainly is a nice look as well. So I'm not really sure which side I'm going to use. I'm going to just kind of put the card together and we'll lay it out and then we'll see what side is best, okay? All right, then you need five strips of the same color cardstock. We're going for pretty much a monochromatic look here that is gonna have some die cuts as your little focal points. So you need five of these, which are three quarters wide by two and three quarters long. And like I said, we will have five. Now to make them stand out a little bit against the background, we are going to, and I didn't add this to the materials, but um, you can do this later or you can just choose not to do it at this point. But to make them stand out a little better, I'm gonna use my, um, my brush here, my blending brush, and I'm going to add a little color to the outside. So it's going to give a little shadowing or a little accent look to it. Not much, just enough to define the edges a little bit. You can also take a sponge um, or a sponge dauber and we're just going to add a little bit to the outside. So I did some already here and hopefully you can see the difference. I think I did three. All right, yeah, so I did three and I'm going to do the other one. Let me hold that closer. Can you see the difference there? So it just has a little darkness around the edge and it's going to stand out a little bit more on the cane weave. See the difference here? All right, so if you have such a thing and you're stamping along, then feel free to do that. Let me just get a scrap paper here. Okay, because when I'm using 
my brush, the first contact is going to be a very strong amount of ink, okay, because it's picking up a lot there. So it seems weird to pick up ink and then hit it off, but you want to have control over how much you're putting on. Sometimes that first initial contact is a heavier ink. You want to start light. So tap just a little bit off and then start rubbing your ink onto your cardstock. So I'm just touching up the edge. I'm going to go around each edge. You can always add more. Once it's on there, you can't take it off. I suppose you can flip the piece over, but sometimes that doesn't work. So like I said, just defines the edge a little bit. Okay. Is anybody actually able to gather materials to stamp along today? Just curious. And if so, what are you using? What colors? Let's start with what color right now. You can put as much on as you want. It's pretty much giving a little bit of contrast. Oh, see, I did not stamp off that time and it went a little heavy a little heavier than I wanted right there on the corner see I wasn't thinking pat it off a little okay it's not going to hurt the card just maybe not quite what I meant to do all right so we are going to now add these to our card it's going to be a vertical card I suppose it could work horizontally too I didn't try one yet but in the catalog, it's a vertical card, so there's a hint. All right. So before I put it all together, I'm just going to kind of lay out the pieces, then I'll decide which side I want the embossing on. It could easily go either way. All right, well, let's get our other elements together and then we'll see. We'll see what we want to do. So I am using from Dainty Delight, the die cuts. I asked you to find something that's, you know, sort of a filigree, a, a pretty, a dainty kind of a die cut that you can cut in white because that's going to be our focal element on the card. So I did a few of these little images here that sprig of leaves. I have these little, they remind me of um, Queen Anne's Lace, which I suppose they could be anything. I wasn't sure exactly which ones I want to put together. So like I tell people, you don't have to know ahead of time. Just get some things out and try it. See what it looks like. Make your decisions then. All right, and I have these other little flowers to play along with. So we're going to add just a touch of color. You don't have to. You could certainly use these just white on here, depending on the color of your card. Um, again, I was trying to think which of these sprays I want to use if I wanted to do this. I do love these little guys, but I didn't like it with these flowers as well. I thought that was too much. So it's possible... I might decide to just use that sprig and just maybe add some of these flowers here. Um, I think I might do that because it's something different than the long sprig. So I don't know, I'll use these little Queen Anne's Lace for another thing. And what I did was I used adhesive sheets on the back of my cardstock. I, um, you can see I cut them out here. I put adhesive sheet on the back of my white cardstock and then I ran it through the die cut machine. I'm saving this because I could get some of those other flowers on some of those other scraps there too. So I will use this up completely as much as I can. You know, even get maybe some of those little tops to those flowers on the side here. Whatever. I like to get the most out of it and then not waste anything. Okay, so. To add just a touch of color here, there are some things we can do. You can use watercolor pencils. <clears throat> we have two different assortments. 
of different colors that you can use. And you can lightly, you know, the way the pencils work is you can lightly draw. Let me get a piece of scrap paper again. Here we go. You can lightly color some onto whatever you want to color. And you can leave it at that. You can go darker if you want. You can get some in-between shades with your, your pencils. And then you take um, our blender pen. Now, I haven't done much with these, so I just want to show you how that works. You take your blender pen, which is double-sided. Both are like a brush, a firm brush tip. Okay, not like the Stampin' Blends, but it is a little soft on the top. And it just has clear liquid in it. So you can actually... Let me bring this a little closer to the camera so that you can see. You can actually spread that clear liquid onto your paper and it will soften those lines of the pencil and it looks like watercoloring. Okay, same thing here. And when it's darker, you can even expand the area of where you have that color. So it, it really is kind of neat. It's a nice way to get a variety of colors. This is the assortment number two. Um, okay, some of these colors might, yeah, I guess all of these are current colors. Now I was thinking some of them might have retired. All right, and then this this is the, the first one. So this one has 13 um, pencils in it, and this one has 10. So you, you can get different color assortments. So that's one way to add subtle color to some of your designs, whether it be die cuts or something that you're coloring in. Another way to do a similar effect is to take an ink pad. Now, this is my older uh, version of Lemon Lime Twist. This was an in color in 17 to 19. I happen to have this style pad. These did not stack well, so the new ones definitely do stack easier. And we're going to use this as a palette. So I'm going to first get the pencils out of the way. <laughs> and then we're going to actually pick up some color on, on the block. Some people in the past, you can see I have some color on the lid here. Another thing you could do is squeeze so that the lid, I mean the ink pad, touches the lid and then you can pick up color there. Some people didn't like kind of messing up their ink pad, whatever, but you can then get color just using your blender pen, picking up the color there. Another way, like I was about to show you, is to just take your clear block, tap it onto your ink, and then that becomes your palette, and you can pick up color that way as well. And so either way, um, either way works. I'm just going to close this up since I already have some over there. I don't have to use that. And we're going to add just a touch of color. I don't want much because I want the white to be more predominant here. I'm going to take my, my blender pen, just pick up some of that ink. I'm going to test it over here to see how dark it is. Um, just going to add some subtle. Now, this die cut has some embossed elements in it. Do you see the inside of the leaf? There's a little ridge in there. So that's going to pick up the ink that you put on it in different ways too. And you're going, this, the ink on it is going to now bring out that little detail even more. So I'm just going to put some on each little leaf. Notice I'm not coloring in, I'm completely, I'm just adding a little shading, so to speak, just touching it. And I'm loving how some of the Leaves are a little darker and some are a little lighter because that's nature. That's how it is in real life. Okay, so look how quick and easy that was just to add that little bit of color there. Now to clean your blend pen, blender pen, what you do, just run it over white paper until it runs clear. And then you're ready to use it for the next color. So that's really cool, right? So I'm going to clean off my block, same way I would do my stamps, but I rub it on some paper first to get most of it off, and then I'm going to rub it on my chamois. That's why I get all that ink on my chamois, 
because that means I just have to clean it more frequently. <laughs> All right, now we're going to go to pink. We're going to use the new bubble bath, which again, I love. This is in the same family as the lemon lolly. Nice, soft, but bright, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, it's a bright color, but has a softness to it as well. So I'm going to pick up again a little bit on my on my block and we're going to add just a touch of pink to the flowers. Now here I did one already and I'm going to do two more because things are good in odd numbers. So I would say three or five perhaps. So we'll see what this looks like. Again, I'm not going to go crazy as to being perfect. I'm just going to add, oh, guess what? I used the wrong side. This side already had some other color on it. Oopsie. Well, that color is going to have a drying leaf, have a drying petal, a drying petal. So, so you always clean it before you put the cap back on. All right, now, and that's another reason why it's good to do this on your block, pick it up on your block. You don't want to go directly to your pad in case something like that happens. Also, it would pick up too much at one time. You, you have more flexibility here. You can spread it out and pick up less if you like. Um, and then go from there. All right, see, that's much better. I'm gonna just gonna go over that, and maybe I'll just tuck that leaf, a uh, petal rather, under something else on my card. There's always a way around your goose, right? All right, so let me show you. All right, yeah, see, this one here is the one that I got a little bit of, like a brownish yellow on. I don't know what that was. Okay, bad me. So we're just getting that subtle look there. All right, if you've just joined on, then, you know, please say hello, say good morning. Oh, look, okay, my comments weren't um, scrolling. All right, let me just take a quick look at what we have going on here. Um, <laughs> Love Bermuda Bay. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. We did it. Lily! Hi, Lily, you're on. Good to see you. I haven't heard from you in a while. Oh, how are you, my friend? Okay. Oh, you like that? Yep. Hey, we think alike, right? Okay, this catalog gives measurements. Oh, no. No, they don't give the measurements. Uh, Karen, sorry. Um, we just have to kind of figure it out ourselves. So, you know, by, by doing cards a lot you can kind of get an idea or you know, it doesn't have to be exact measurements all right or ask um ask me if i have an idea i can try to help you all right i'm going to clean the tip here and just rub it until it's clear you get three of these to a pack i don't remember the cost at the moment but it's definitely a good bargain all right it's all clear See that? All good. Okay, what you're seeing there is just wetness. All right, maybe add a little bit of yellow to the middle. So I'll go back to my lemon lolly. Put it off to the side here. And up here that's very juicy so I don't need much okay I'm just gonna cut that cut 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 might not even show up much at all but it just shows a little bit of contrast you might not even be able to see that on the camera but trust me it's there cleaning off my tip okay there we go back here. Okay, Nadine's not crafting along today. That's okay. That I, I got the um, measurements of stuff too late. <laughs> so I apologize for that. Hey, oh, Marjorie's from Tennessee. Yay, nice to see you. Hey, Betty. All right, Betty, hi. Haven't seen you for a while either, Betty. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let's close it all up and put this together. So these die cuts, I could put little 
touches of glue on the back. This one is not so bad. If I were using this one, this would be tricky to get little bits of glue on the back. So that's where those adhesive sheets really come in handy. I'm just going to put that aside and use it later. Um, let's put this all together. Decide which side of the cane embossing folder I want. So this is the back side. This is where it's a little bit more flat. And we're just going to tap those little flowers there. Maybe one there, then maybe another one up here. Okay, so here we go. Let me see what's going on. So it just adds a little something. I'm gonna glue, we're gonna peel off the backs and add them down, and we're gonna add our sentiment. Um, so we could do it that way, or let's see if I can turn this, flip this around. Eh, not gonna work. <laughs> Let's start over. We can use the actual cane side. We're gonna make these straight, by the way. If you had a funky card, you can leave them funky. That would be all right, too. Now, let me know, what do you think? Is that a little too busy? No, it's hard to tell if nothing is kind of straight yet. Okay, so what do you think? Did you get a good look at it? The actual cane side, where we see the strips? Or, let me do this one more time, flip it over where we have the more flat side. I don't know if you'll be able to see much of a difference actually on the camera. But if you have an opinion, let me know, All right? I am, I think I'm leaning toward this one. Although I love the other one a lot. I'm just thinking with the flat sides here, it might be a little more subtle background with the flowers. Okay, I see some people weighing in like I am the more flat side. Yeah, okay. Oh, hi, Krista. Good to see you. All right, let's glue it together. So nice and easy. I know I took a little while explaining all this. The next ones will go quicker. Now that we get the concept. All right, and I am going to be done right at 11 today. I then have a dentist appointment right in town at 11.30. So I know one of my other regulars said she couldn't make it today because she had dentist. Must be that kind of a day. All right, then we're going to glue these down. So let me show you. If you want to be precise and get them even, if you're a, <laughs> a anal person and you want things, everything equal, just right, again, my biggest how my friend is the top part of my grid paper. Um, the bottom part goes left to right um, like a ruler. The top one starts at zero and then uh, she gives you measurements on each side going out. So the card is five and a half so I know I'm going to two and three quarters and then I can see where the zero is here and that's where my middle um, strip is going to go and then from there I can e evenly space the others out. So let's glue that down on there and it gives us at least a starting point is where the middle is. All right, you do have to eyeball having equal on the top and bottom and for me it's a little easier when I turn it sideways to see it that way. You can also measure this way and get a little bit of an idea. Okay, that's going to one and a half here and one and a half here, so close enough. All right, then from there, I will just position the others to what looks equal for my eye. And glue those down. I'll hold them both there, the one I'm gluing and the one that doesn't have glue on it yet, just so I can get the spacing correct. And if it's not perfect, perfect. Don't worry about it because um, it's going to be covered with the with the die cuts. So people aren't going to be looking directly just at this to see how lined up it is. And they're going to be just happy that you made them a handmade card. They're going to love you for it anyway. <laughs> we are the most critical of ourselves, right? 
Oh, Karen, I'm glad you're learning a lot. That's my pleasure. I love being able to help people. Because you know what? I still learn things from others. Some of you come up with great ideas and you know, other demonstrators, things, you know, tutorials I watch on uh, YouTube or see things on Pinterest. There's always things to learn, always new ways that you can try to do things. Right. If you have an embossing folder that does have horizontal or vertical lines, that is helpful. Like this one, I'm able to see that I'm getting these straight because of the horizontal alignment of that pattern. And like I said, remember when you're gluing or adhering something to and something that's embossed, remember that your adhesive is only touching the part that's raised. So there's less surface area there for it to grab. So make sure you are generous with your adhesive because you don't want that falling off. Make sure you get it all across. All right, so there we go. We have that. And now we're going to add our little sprigs and, and our flowers. So I think I'm going to do what I kind of had before. I'm gonna put one down below and one there, and then another one up on top. Now, where's the one with that funky petal? Um, you know what? I could even hardly see it. I think it might have been this one. Yeah, and it just looks like a darker pink right now, so I'm not even going to think about it. Not going to worry. I will first pull down the adhesive on this, being very careful not to tear the die cut. Okay, so, all right, here we go. Lorraine made a little goof here. <laughs> I actually, I cut the wrong side. You know what, my lighting last night, I had that heat, that sticky on the back. And when I went to die cut it, I did not have the cardstock side up. I had the adhesive backing up. So this one's gonna look a little different. <laughs> um, I am going to have to go the other way with this. And this is the back. I'm not going to get all that detail. And look what I did. I colored on the, the part that I'm supposed to peel. So, all right, we're just going to make do. I'm going to use the back side of this. I don't have all the detail, but you will still get the same idea. And we're going to go the other way instead of on the left. It's going to be on the right. <sighs> oh, well. Alrighty, so you know what? I'm going to have to do the same thing with my flowers. I think that was on the same paper. Let me get the little work here. All right, so note to self, make sure you're on the right side when you're die cutting. Um, oh, no, this one was right. Phew. Okay, I did this one on the right spot. All right, so now we're going to have to add a little bit of green onto here. So back to the drawing board, literally. Okay, but this won't take long, as you know. And you know what? Unless you're a stamper and you know the dies, you're not going to know the difference. Whoever I give this to will never know, so don't tell them. <laughs> I can see a difference. It looks, I don't have that same detail, but you can see a little bit of the embossed vein of the leaf. See, we all make mistakes. Just go with it or do it over, whatever. Okay, like I said, most people will not know the difference. Always clean your blending brush. Okay, back to the flowers. Let's put one down here, another one a little further up, and then another one up on top. Like I said, odd numbers are a good thing. Okay. Oh, thank you. Thanks, Jane. Hi, Ricky. <laughs> Put another one 
here. Like about there, maybe. And then another one on top. Thanks for your patience. Now you'll have to go back and look through the catalog and see. Okay, so now this one was backwards. Uh, all right, I'm going to stick that on top and then color that in real quick. Thanks for your patience. But again, you'll see how quick and easy that is. Let's pick up some ink. Add a little pink. Pick up the ink. Add the pink. Ta-da! Clean it off. Add my yellow center. Like I said, on the camera, you might not be able to see that, but it does add something in person. Okay, close things up. My cap, my ink. And then we need a sentiment, right? So let's get a scrap of lemon lolly. And this could be a label if you like or whatever. I'm just going to go in my little scrap bag here. I keep some of you know I keep just a little cello bag with my small pieces in there, labeled with the name, and then I slip that right into the package of the rest of my cardstock. That way when I go and need a piece of I say, Oh, I need lemon lolly. Do I have a scrap that works? If I don't, then I know I have to cut a full sheet. So that works for me. Everyone has their own little um, way to do things. That's all good. All right, we're going to use from Seasonal Branches. I'm going to stamp my sentiment. We're just going to attach it right there. Um, let's see how you can see these are fairly new too. Since I have a lot of space here, I wonder if this will work. You're in my thoughts. You're in my thoughts. Yeah, I think that'll work. And oh, look at that. Even if it's my scrap. All right, let's see how straight I can get this now. Okay, pick up the stamp. I'm going to do that in Memento Black. That really stands out. And because it's photopolymer, it's a lot easier to see through and get that straight. Ta-da! All righty. Yeah, it is very spring-like, right, Michelle? Hi. Good to see you on today. So this is a fun set. I haven't played with the images yet, but I have used some of the sentiments. They're small. They're delicate. So when you need something like that it's a good it's going to be one of my go-to's i know for sure because they're just your regular sentiments you're in my thoughts get well happy birthday love thanks may you feel sheltered in the love that surrounds you okay that, that's great for someone going through hard times or sympathy card sending an abundance of love can be connected with that um so just your go around pieces All right and we're going to Add that onto here with dimensional. So you have that monochromatic look, but you do have that little accent of um, your slightly colored images there. All right, so I'm going to use mini dots because this is narrow. One, two, three should do it. I like my pick tool. If you're wondering why I have glitter washi tape on here, <laughs> it's because a few years ago I would take this off and it would be on my desk. And because it was clear, sometimes I would lose it. So I put the glitter washi tape on there so I could identify it more. And also, if you're stamping with some other people, you can mark your tools. I put some a, a blue design washi tape on here so that if other people are using 
their pick tool. It's not going to get mixed up. I'm going to know this one is mine. And look what I have here. There's a blue gem <laughs> that came off of here, it looks like. How about that? Stuck from a former project. All right. All right, so let me finish this one up and then show you some other ideas along the same line. Okay, probably won't get them all put together today. I have some that are already done, but then the others I'll show you the idea. All right, so we're going to put this, I'm gonna put this right here. I'm going to have it extend that there. It doesn't have to stay contained. It could if you want, it could overlap the, the flowers. But you know, just for it to stand out a little bit more, I'm going to have it shift over to the side. All right, so look how pretty that is. Try to find that in the catalog. Right, write in the comments which page it is and you know tell me which card it is all right so that that's fun so here is one done in the moody mauve that i did not add color to i just used the daisies and these were pretty bold looking so to give it a little softer look i die cut the um these little sprays here to just soften the overall look a little bit and be, I didn't even put adhesive on the backs of those because, or or use adhesive sheets. I just glued them to the back of these daisies. And when I put my di my um, dimensional dots on, I made sure to strategically put them in places that would also hold this to the back of the daisies. And then this, I did the same color, the mauve, of course, but because it's a darker color, I didn't want to use black on there or some other dark color, so I heat embossed that so that the fangs is also in white. The background here is uh, what came with the with the country um, countryside in. So that is I get that here. Okay, that is the countryside blossoms. On the front here, it's actually shown sideways, so it does go this way. There is an up and a down if you look at the flowers you'll see that it does have a direction. So I use that one on there. That is also one of my favorite um, embossing folders now. That is one of my go-tos. Right, and then on the inside, of course, you can stamp a little something too. I didn't get to decorate the insides yet. All right, then um, one of the other ideas that I had was I was using, of course I didn't put it all together, but you'll see how it's gonna go. Mellow Moss, I mean, yeah, there we go. All right, let's get this here. Okay, so I was using from Nature's Prints, Natural Prints is the dyes, and this has that, it's sort of a wreath, but it's not really symmetrical. It's a little off kilter, so I'm not even sure. Maybe if I did it this way, maybe I'd use it as a wreath itself but I don't know something about that is just like hmm that's not quite straight so I'm not real sure if I how often I would use it that way unless I cover it up and maybe put flowers over here and, and it would balance out a little bit more perhaps so I don't know so using mossy meadow if I said mellow moss before that used to be another color I keep coming up with the wrong one mossy meadow mellow moss <laughs> anyway so I used the fern embossing folder for that one keeping with sort of the nature and the leafy bits and um, I didn't bother running this with the adhesive sheets because there's enough solid areas for me to put that on and then my strips I did not um, shade those but you will see how they will stand out more when I do add the shading to that um, one other thing that you can do, if you have a corner punch, a corner rounder, let's say, or I don't know if I call it corner punch, but a, a corner rounder punch, then you can soften those sides there. You don't have to keep them square. You can make them rounded if you like, or if you have, um, if you have a, a punch that will make the ends a little bit more decorative. So um, we used to have a trio punch that had a little corner rounder on it, but not in the new catalog, unfortunately. 
I loved my corner rounder. So another suggestion you could do is you can make these banner cuts either either direction. You can use these little edges if you like on this Happy Labels Pick a Punch. Gives you like a ticket edging here or a little scallop edging. So if you want to decorate the edges to these a little bit, that's certainly another option as well. All right, so that's the way that's going to look. And so this, I'm actually going to just cut that apart. See, sometimes when I'm out and about, I make sure my scissors are um, identified as well. So I'm going to use the ones that don't have that <laughs> right now because it's a little, little annoying. It gets in the way, but at least no one's going to think it's theirs. All right, so I'm going to look to see where good places would be to cut this. So I'm going to snip that right there. And I see this leaf and this part are different plants. So I'm going to cut there. And then I'll do the same up here. Here's a little narrow piece. So I can use that as part of the spray. This is, <clears throat> excuse me, this is vanilla, by the way, um, because the white I thought was a little too stark against the, um, the mossy color. Okay, so I would arrange these in some way. I would touch this up with some green. I will put it together light later and put it in the comments. And these I thought could be a little flowery. So thinking maybe either with my ink or with a blending brush, adding just a touch of yellow to that might be nice to bring that out. I would go a little darker so it shows up against the green. Um, just to have some contrast, maybe a little bit of pink also would look nice on here. So just add contrast to the otherwise dark card. So. There we go. Hopefully you try some. Oh, and my sentiment, I thought to use the double oval punch, the smaller punch could work nicely on this card as well. So you get the idea, right? I'll put that one all together and take a look later on. Come back to see what that looks like. Let me put all my little pieces together. So it's like flower arranging. You can just kind of keep trying until something comes up that you like. So we have that one in the Mossy Meadow, the Moody Moth, and the Lemon Lolly. And see if you can find this card in the catalog. Like I said, it's not the same colors, not the same dyes, not the same embossing folders, not the same sentiments, but it's the same layout. And then see what you can do with it. Right? Put it in the comments to this video or put it in... Um, um, I often picture the cards in a separate post and you can put your card in the comments below there too. So you can't make your own post on my business page, but you can um, add as a comment. All right. So um, I hope you like that. And um, oh, Teresa found it. Good job, Teresa. Okay, I'm not going to say it out loud. Maybe some of you see her comment, but go, go over and look at it. And um, and then see if you can make your own. All right. If you look at theirs, it looks like their corners are rounded. So I don't know, I'm going to have to look and see how that happened. Maybe they did it by hand. I don't know. But what they did was they had opposite corners rounded. And then the other two they left straight. So that could look nice too. Anyway, good luck, guys. I hope that you all have a great week. And... We will be skipping next week, um, and we will catch up the week after that, okay? All right, so have a good one, everybody. I appreciate you coming on, and I will check your comments. If you didn't leave a comment yet and you want to be in the raffle, take this last 30 seconds to do so, and you will get entered into my raffle for a prize. All right, have a good one. Bye, everyone.